Norwegian construction workers are going to the other side of the globe to build a hydroelectric power station in Australia. Australia have asked the Norwegians to build the gigantic project planned in Guthaga. There are about 300 men leaving. Here is a group leaving from Gardaman Airport in Norway. And here is the leader for the trip, Eikland. Where do these men come from, Eikland? asked the interviewer. Most come from north of Norway, about 24 or 25 from the north, and some travelled from the west coast and the south coast, and a few from east Norway. And how long will you be in Australia, Eikland? About three years, but we hope to be finished before and get back home. If there is anything you would like to say before you leave, perhaps a greeting. Yes, I would like to send greetings on behalf of all to acquaintances, friends and dears and hope they are all well and I hope this will go well for our country. Ahead now lies a plane trip of about 25,000 kilometres, just about halfway around the globe with a flying time of around 60 hours. And these men, who normally stay close to home, are about to experience America, the Pacific Ocean, Hawaii, the Fiji Islands, and many more. Fourteen firms from 11 different countries had offered to build the project in Australia. The civil engineering firm F. Selma had been given the job to perform the task, an honour to the Norwegian civil engineering construction experience in hydropower construction. There was not a well regulated housing situation awaiting the Selma workers when arriving at Munyang in the Snowy River after flying halfway around the globe. But after a while, the necessary barracks for the men and workshop buildings were constructed and the power station site got deeper and deeper. Systematically, the excavation goes ahead with a crafts, a metal type shovel, wheelbarrows, excavators and powerful trucks. All the excavation mass was taken to different points around the site. Already the four construction sites are being inspected by civil engineer F. Selma, who during the inspection is accompanied by civil engineers Holst and Quayle, the latter the chief supervisor of the Guthaka project. So far, engineer F. Selma has visited his project in Australia four times. 72 hours by plane each way. From the slope, where the excavation and planning of the pipeline is carried out, parallel to the rest of the working of the project, one has a general view of the power station site, where including the discharge outlet channel, 33,000 cubic metres of mass was taken out. All over the construction region, civil engineers and technicians are busy with surveys and control. To secure a safe river crossing for materials and staff, a provisional wooden bridge was built until the permanent concrete bridge was built. The material to build the provisional bridge was made out of hardwood and muscles were required in its construction.
pipeline track had an angle incline of about 30 degrees, so safety had to be increased for the bulldozers due to the pushing power, and a cable was attached to a winch on top of the hill. A mobile crane was used regularly and was a very effective machine on the site. And the provisional cable trolley on rails installed along the pipeline solved a transport problem for the men and materials in building the Penstock pipeline. When the first pipe arrived in Munyang from Sydney, it marked a milestone in material deliveries to the project. And while the heavy trucks continued the two to three day long transport, the levelling and detailed preparation of the Penstock site continued in a regular timetable. When the power station site was finished, excavated, the batching plant stood ready to supply the foundations and the continued construction of the buildings. Because the concrete quantities became larger, it became necessary with a better and mechanicalised distribution system, and the concrete was delivered in wagons and wheelbarrows. As soon as the concrete was emptied into the prepared formwork, it was vibrated to give it the required quality, and so the power station grew day after day, week after week, in the middle of the Australian continent. Special strong reinforcing steel bars were cut and bent in Munyang. Closeness of the bars could tell you the strength and quality in the power station's construction. In the mountains of Guthaga, where the dam is to be built, the bulldozer is busy levelling the ground for the cable crane foundations. The machine engineer, who is leading this work, is mounting the machinery for the two cranes side by side. The crane towers can be operated to reach various locations of the dam site. And here we see how the winches are installed and mounted, 
and the crane driver will sit on the highest position so he has a good view of the dam site. At the same time, work is conducted to divert the Snowy River into a bypass tunnel. The previous riverbed lies dry and the last work to secure the coffer dam goes on. Whilst the engineers evaluate the work from a place in an old riverbed where Snowy River before over hundreds of years cascaded downwards. The bypass tunnel has been excavated through the mountains and comes out in the day below the dam site. Carpenters and timbermen are working to close the openings in the coffer dam. From the batching plant at Guthaga, the concrete is driven in buckets on rails drawn by a jeep and from the bridge over the dam site, the cable crane carries the concrete buckets to the pouring sites of the dam.
The distribution reservoir has also made progress at this point of time. And this undertaking has a provisional road built which later becomes a permanent road. And this work will require blasting and many work hours. Again that, I'll do it again. The distribution reservoir has also made progress at this point of time. And this undertaking has a provisional road built which later becomes a permanent road. And this work requires many work hours and blasting. In the meantime, the work continues on the main dam and the construction moves upwards between loose crumbling mountain wall sides which could not supply the stones required in the concrete mix. Stones for this purpose therefore had to be brought in from other places. The location of the construction sites in the mountains is subject to a very changeable weather pattern. One day sun, next day rain, and so the day thereafter sun, and on many days the men had to use spades to shovel through the snowfalls to continue the construction work. The construction management in Snowy River had an established special repair gang which travelled to the building sites. Their special tasks were to repair the rolling stock, excavators and bulldozers and trucks, change the wheels to the powerful trucks which never are driven on flat roads, and do repairs to vehicle frames due to the strain and damage from their hard work. Now and then, men had to go out. Start again. Now and then, men had to go out to quell bushfires in the terrain, which was bone dry in the Australian hot sun. But one year later, the forest was green again and the damage was covered by vegetation. At the midpoint of the tunnel, the work continues in three day shifts. Here, the men prepared to get ready for transport home to the barracks. While waiting in the sun, the tallest and shortest on the shift demonstrate their height difference. Now they start to move towards the cable car which is approaching from across the valley with the new work gang. The cable car carries the men back across the valley high above the snowy river to rest and relax until their next shift. This is not from 
south of Norway, winter 1954, but winter in Australia, 1953. And the snow masses are not in any way smaller. And the bulldozer had a hard fight to clear and remove the snow on the roads between the work sites in the snowy mountains. The snowy mountains carry its name in full right. This is not from south of Norway, winter 1954, but winter in Australia, 1953. And the snow masses are not in any way smaller, and the bulldozers had a hard fight to clear and remove the snow from the roads between the work sites in the Snowy Mountains. The Snowy Mountains carries its name in full right. At the barracks at Guthaga, the snow is a huge problem, as along the roads. The snow cover changed the barracks into igloos, and the men have to dig themselves in and out. Women and wives continue the housework despite the coldness and the snow. Down in the valley, the construction of the power station carries on.
with the summer came melting snow and plenty of rain, and thereby a flood. The amount of water was so great that the bypass tunnel could not cope and water broke across the dam. And here we see Augie Stavdale's father in the white coat and hat. Norwegians made temporary homes at the Selma construction site in Australia and family life carries on as normal. As new Norwegian babies entered into the world, the colony gathered for christenings in the little chapel. Do that again, okay. Norwegians made temporary homes at the Selma construction site in Australia and family life carried on as normal. As new Norwegian babies entered into the world, the colony gathered for christenings in the little chapel. This time, it's a bigger christening, with six children to be christened and named.
Other children during their stay in Australia have reached confirmation age and in the national costume they acknowledge their vows and celebrate with family and Norwegian friends. During holidays and excursions, the Selma Norwegians in Australia visit the cities in their cars. Some visit the large amusement parks and there are also many other arrangements. For example, there is horse dressage riding. Just as in America, Australia also have rodeos with wild horses and oxes. At the grandstand we find the Norwegian colony as interested spectators of this unfamiliar show. Here and there sit representatives of the Australian Aboriginal community, seemingly not very excited by the wild show played in the arena. Another participant of this sport if you can call it that, is the ambulance. But many prefer the zoo with flamingos. And from the jungle, wild animals such as lions and tigers were also found there. The children were more interested in the duck pond. Norwegians and snow together, 
it's almost a natural law that a ski contest will be arranged, complete with Norwegian flags and ski jumps on the mountain. The homes at the barracks are often visited by guests such as wombats, and they get food from the families. The children get together and play in the field with their dolls, in their Norwegian sweaters despite being thousands of kilometres away from their homeland. mother is finished with the daily wash and duties, the evening falls over the Selma project in the snowy mountains. And down in the valley, the Munyang power station stands as a monument of Australia's trust in Norway's civil engineering skill and work activity. Mm.